Alexander Volkanovsky lays out his plans in the featherweight division following Ilya Tapuria's victory over Max Holloway on UFC 308. The shocking technical knockout of the Hawaiian by the recently crowned featherweight champion started new wave of discussions about the future of the division, including Tapuria's potential as a dominant force in the weight class and the possible end of an era in regards to two of the greatest featherweights in history, Volkanovsky and Holloway. While it is still too early to talk about Tapuria's next title defense, Dana White's sympathetic attitude towards Volkanovski and the former champion, entering the octagon after the fight to face off against Ilya and the two publicly agreeing to a rematch, indicates that Tapuria's next fight will in fact most likely be against Alex. And while some portion of the fans isn't highly enthusiastic about this, the prospect of seeing Volk try to reclaim his title after taking some time off, readjusting tactically and strategically, is promising. Alex talks about his intentions for the rematch and a possible return timeline. You know, I'm not getting any younger. Everyone knows that. Um, I've got one last crack at this uh, title and I'm going to put everything into it. So hopefully uh, earlier next year uh, we can make it happen. You know, because uh, I'm yeah, not thinking it's going to be too long. And I don't want to put uh, other things out there. You know, if it's going to be a crazy weight or if there's injuries or something like that that we're not aware of, and then they want to do an interim or something like that, we'll see. But um, but yeah, I think I think he's pretty healthy and we could make it uh, happen sometime early next year. Now I'm starting to be like, all right, I'm, I want to get in there. But at the same time, it's still clear that it's not too early next year. So I'm not, you know, I'm not a, yeah. Big John McCarthy criticizes Magomed Ankalaev after his win over Alexander Rakic. While Ankalaev extended his unbeaten streak to 13 fights, accumulating one of the most impressive runs in the division for a long time. The lack of aggression in his highly reserved and defensively responsible fighting style has certainly caused him some problems. UFC and Dana specifically famously don't like fighters being overly cautious, something that sometimes leads to performances aren't very fan-friendly and can slow down momentum of cards that included dynamic fights beforehand. Most fans don't like that type of approach to fighting, and the company won't be too quick to announce Ankalaev as the next challenger for Alex Pereira's title, despite him being the clear number one contender. It seems that in Magomed's case, he needs his opponent to press the action and pursue him aggressively in order for him to engage and produce an entertaining clash. But when he's leading, he comfortable cruising on a slight advantage of significant strikes. Big John shares thoughts on this. I don't want to say anything bad about it because he like he put on a good performance. He put pressure. He went after it. Josh, there's just so much more that this guy can do. He won't do it. This is crazy. Does it remind you of someone named John Fitch? Oh my God! Does it not just in reverse? Just in reverse. You know, it's one yeah. of those you look and you go, I know you're a good fighter. I can. Yeah. I will never ever say anything but that. I I respect your skill set. There's no doubt in my mind, you're one of the better guys in the world at your weight class, but you can absolutely beat insomnia. Mm -hmm. And it's just the, it's just the way you go about fighting. Yeah. I mean, I don't, <clears throat> Rakic, I think I, I had seen a preview that he was able to get potentially get like a title shot if he won this fight. And I'm like, I, I don't see it. I didn't see Rakic it or Ankalaya. No, Rakic also. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was told that he neither one would deserve it. Michael Bisping reacts to Robert Whitaker's crushing defeat to Kamzat Shemaev and the former champion, explaining what happened that led to him tapping so quickly. The sight of one of the most beloved fighters in the middleweight division, whose resilience has been tested in wars with the most dangerous athletes that have competed in the weight class, including Yoel Romero, tapping in panic to a choke, was shocking to many fans and pundits around the world. Later, we found out that a serious injury sustained in the fight was the main reason for the quick tap. Michael Bisping reacts to the implications of this. It was a face crank. Like his forearm just went straight on the bottom tooth. I didn't even have, I didn't have a moment to turn the head or anything. It was just like, it was just on. It was on. Yeah, he lost. And he lost in a bad way. And it derailed his potential future title fight. Crushed his teeth in. There's embarrassment. There's shame that you put on yourself. There's regret. There's all this type of stuff. There's annoyance for wasting all of this time training your goddamn ass off, pushing yourself to the absolute limits, missing birthdays with family, uh, children, you know, social engagements. There's all that stuff, you know? But at the end of the day, it's our choice and we step in there and sometimes you win and hopefully most of the time you win. And if you're really special, all the time you win, but sometimes you lose. 
And that's the way you've got to look at it. Hamza Chimaev reveals he roughed up Ilya Tapuria in a sparring session. Following the UFC 308 event, the Chechen prospect stayed in Abu Dhabi, unlike most of the fighters that competed on the card with him, who flew back to their home countries on the following day. Kamzat enjoys the hospitality of prominent people in the region and is in no rush to leave the country. His friend, a Russian vlogger named Adam Zubarayev, is also there with him, frequently filming interviews and day in the lifestyle vlogs with Kamzat. After the Whitaker fight, Chimev sat down with him to reflect on his performance, and in one moment, when asked what he thought of the main event and Tapuria's finish of Holloway, he revealed that he sparred with Tapuria shortly before the fights and he didn't hold back even considering the size and weight advantage. Quote, It was a good fight for him. Finishing Holloway was nice. Good result for the Georgians. They still have a champion in that division. I've worked with him before a few times, and the last time he came down to the gym. A couple of days ago to hang out with Garam. We sparred a bit, and sometimes I forget that I soon have to compete compete and go too hard in sparring, like on ordinary sparring days. He tried to go hard, so I cracked him hard a couple of times and took him down. I'm not going to say what I did after that. It's not necessary." End quote. Paul Felder wants to see how Dreykus Duplessis deals with Kamzat Chimaev after the Chechen's dominant performance in the Robert Whittaker bout. Kamzat basically mauled the former champion and finished him by disfiguring his jaw inside of a round. This effectively secured him a title shot, which might be the next fight for the South African champion, with UFC choosing to go with this option instead of the Strickland rematch. Duplessis promised to ruin Kamzat's undefeated record, his awkward but effective striking ability, paired with the durability and high-pressure fighting style he possesses, makes the Chimev matchup especially interesting. This clash promises fireworks. How will Duplessis deal with the first round against Chimev's chain wrestling and crushing pressure? And how will Kamzat hold up and withstand the war of attrition? If the fight goes five rounds, are the most intriguing questions about this matchup. And like us, Paul Felder can't wait to find that out. I kind of had a sneaking feeling that Robert Whitaker was just going to have it to give him yeah. a fight at least yeah, right. and drag him into deep waters. And we yeah. were, I was wrong on that one. Yeah, so me so, too. Right with you. And Paul, yeah. and based on what you saw from Chimaev, is, is, is that the next champ? Man, I think so. I think so. I think if it's him and Drickus, I, me and John were kind of talking about this. I think Drickus is crazy and wild <laughs> enough that, and and he was right. What was the one of the first things that he tweeted was like, "I'm going to take your O." Like this dude doesn't care, dude, right? man. And that's what I love about it. Like let him let him go at it. That's I know Strickland's already on on the social media and he's given his argument. And hey, man, that's your job. Fight fight for your shot. But if it's me, nothing against any of them. Man, I want to see that fight. I really do. 